Stephen Deshaun Francis, born February 21st, 1977. Many people awaited the Steve Francis story, thinking it would be all highlights, reminiscing, and smiles. But ain't nothing sweet about the path this once NBA great had to walk. Losing his mom at 18, father locked up for 20 years for robbing a bank to support his people. How many of us can relate? I use this term a lot, being placed behind the eight ball. Well, there's people that are behind the eight ball, and then there's the ones who are the eight ball black with the target on your back as soon as the water breaks. Breaks as in, rack them up, young blood. They killed everyone around you until it's your turn to finally sink. The white ball eludes all holes. Then they throw their hands up in the air in celebration as you slip through the cracks to be forgotten. Coins in, repeat the game. Today's feature focuses on a guy that really made it out. He managed to defy all odds and damn near became a champion had it not been for a few crucial events. He was once an upstanding role model and was on the path to showing everyone that they too could rise from less than unfortunate circumstances and see their dreams come true. In many opinions, as well as mine, I'd say he did that. But as talented as this guy was, as gifted an athlete he was, he left more to be desired. It hurts to imagine what Steve Francis could have been. Stunt number one, how do you build a skyscraper? Knowledge is power and ignorance is a short bliss. To build any building, you have to start with a strong foundation. Some constructors wait months for that foundation to sit in order to make sure it's right. Measurements, securing the structure from moisture, factoring natural forces like earthquakes, plumbing, and it must be able to support dead load and live load. Dead being the building itself, which never changes. Live being when it's filled with people and the things they bring in. Foundation is the most important piece to building anything, especially a building that's expected to touch the sky. I decided to begin with this because it's the biggest tragedy of Steve Francis' story, and it's one he just couldn't control. He never had the foundation needed for longevity. Losing both parents early, living on food stamps, sharing an apartment with 18 people, and attending six high schools, only playing in a total of two games. Imagine that. Imagine I told you that today there will be a kid you won't see on anybody's top five, anyone's recruitment list, no YouTube highlights, and no long drawn out commitment videos hyping some average prospect. But he's still going to become an NBA all-star and one of the most exciting players ever. It'll either set you laughing like a Charlie Murphy skit is playing or give one of you hope that there's a way. After dropping out of high school, Francis was noticed at an AAU game by a coach at San Jacinto College in Texas. It was his only chance and he took it. There, he would go on to be a star, leading them to the Junior College National Championship and was at that point undefeated. But not having a solid foundation really affected him emotionally and as we'll later see, affected his livelihood. Stunt number two, Jeff Van Gundy. Francis would transfer to another junior college closer to his home in Allegheny College, where he led that team to its only undefeated season. He was outstanding and caught the eyes of the Maryland Terrapins, where he would later transfer. And this was where the legend of the franchise blew up. In his one year there, Steve Francis was lights out. He was so good that they let him do his patented travel fast break dunk. It was so sweet, you just had to ignore it and he did it at least once a game. Francis was named to the All-ACC First Team and the All-ACC Tournament Team after his lone season. The Terrapins were a number two seed in the NCAA Tournament, but were defeated by St. John's in the Sweet 16. He averaged 17 points a game and four assists and also three steals. He now had a huge decision to make. Stay and finish at Maryland or leave for the chance you and your family have been in dire need for. The decision was easy and he left. But on draft night, things would take a dark turn when the Vancouver Grizzlies held the number two pick and decided to use it on Steve. A team he told he had no interest in playing for. A team that was hours flight time from his home. And a team that already had Mike Bibby. 
yet they still decided to take him and Francis was furious. So he did with any player that was just a high school dropout with no real guidance and most importantly, understanding of himself would do. Ask for a trade, which wasn't so easy, but was granted. Before he even played a game in Vancouver, he was traded to the Houston Rockets, a team that had the perfect coach for his style in Rudy Tomjanovich. He gave Steve the rock and let him do his thing. The franchise took off and was dazzling in his first two seasons. Although this coach player fit was great, it didn't lead to on-court success like the franchise wanted and they, along with the coach, mutually decided to move on. And here comes the biggest stun of Steve Francis' career, in my opinion. The stepping down of one of the greatest player coaches in Rudy Tomjanovich ever and the acquisition of coach Jeff Van Gundy. Van Gundy was and still is a guy with one of the biggest egos and little man syndromes I've ever seen. Well, other than this guy. To the point where I'm actually motivated to where I'm finally there. I don't like his, I don't trust his, and I don't need his. But I don't like or trust any f***ing thing you people do. And by the way, f*** you, you're gonna die broke, I'm gonna die rich and happy with the hottest bitches on my boat. F*** you. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you when I'm rich. Van Gundy stepped into the coaching job and made everything about him. He completely took the ball from Francis and implemented his half-court postman style which ran Yao Ming into the ground and turned their all-star point guard into a glorified role player. Francis went from 21 points a game and 6 assists to 16 points a game and 6 assists. After just one season, the team sided with Van Gundy and traded Francis to the Orlando Magic for Tracy McGrady. Van Gundy got his team and still couldn't win. One of the worst coaches in the history of the game, if you ask me, as far as on the player's side. Not because of his X and O's, but he just didn't understand players or how to get the most out of them. And Francis's career was never the same after that trade. He did manage to go to Orlando and have two great seasons where he averaged a career high in assists at 7 a game and his points were back up to 21 points per game. He was playing at all-star levels but after the team traded his guy Mobley, he and the team slipped and missed the playoffs both seasons. Francis's attitude played a huge role and he was reportedly missing practice more and more and showing up drunk to games. He was suspended for his conduct and eventually traded to the New York Knicks, where by that time, he was just a shell of himself. He was battling injuries to his air, eyes, and knees, and he struggled to be the player we all knew him to be. A coach is very important to a player's development and can be the reason they break. Without that strong foundation we spoke of earlier, I think the Van Gundy hire broke the franchises as building and sent Steve spiraling. Stunt number three, personal demons. You can argue that stunt number two was all needed to conclude this video. Because really, on the floor, that's what ended Steve Francis. That trade from the Rockets that obviously Coach Van Gundy orchestrated was a gut check for Francis. Steve was 27, 28 years old at that time and was still in the prime of his career. Yeah, for a normal player that hadn't went through what Steve Francis had, this would be the best time of his life. By this time, Steve had lost his real father, stepfather, mother, team, and city he loved, all-star status, and his reputation. Some players just don't deal with being traded very well. To be traded and have all those demons in your closet can lead anyone down the wrong road, and that's where Steve went. By this time, because of injuries and Francis now turning to alcohol to soothe his demons, he was a shell of himself to say the least. He averaged 10 points a game in his two seasons in NY and was then traded to the Blazers where he was bought out for $30 million. He chose to go back to Houston, played in 10 games and averaged 5 points a game until being traded to the very team he shunned on draft night, the Grizzlies, now in Memphis. But long before all this, Francis was done, man, mentally. He wouldn't play a game for them and was waived in 2009, the end of this once future great's career on the court. At that point, Steve turned even more heavily into alcohol and can be seen drunk on numerous occasions in clubs, 
back of police cars, and being choked out by Steven Jackson. He was losing weight, drinking heavily, and quickly becoming the biggest meme on social media. But those people don't understand Steve, man. This guy just wanted someone to love him. He never had that after his mom died and thought he found it in Houston. To see him go out like this is sad, but I'll always hold on to the great memories he gave me growing up. One of my favorite players ever. No meme or news reports is gonna change that, man. Salute to the franchise and I hope you get your life back on track it seems like you're gaining weight again and got your mind on the right path. Stay up, my G. Salute to you, and I wish you the best. It's your boy JC, Stunning Growth, and I'm out.